Hello everyone, welcome to Computer Vision 3, Detection, Segmentation and Tracking, or CV3 DST for short. So as you all know, due to the virus situation, we decided to take this lecture fully online. So we will be recording the lecture and releasing the videos once per week so that you can still keep up with a nice schedule. Okay, so let's get started. So let's see, what is this course about? So it's a course definitely on computer vision. So there's a very strong focus on computer vision. So we're going to um, cover the topics of object detection, instance and semantic segmentation. And then we'll take all of this knowledge to the temporal domain for multiple object tracking, both in 2D and 3D. Now what this um, course is, is complementary to is other computer vision courses. There's computer vision one and computer vision two. And um, I would especially recommend you to take computer vision two, which is related to multiple view geometry. So how to go from the 2D image space to the 3D world coordinates. Now this course is definitely not an introduction to deep learning. So we have the I2DL, the introduction to deep learning course at TUM, uh, which is offered also this semester. So if you're not familiar with the basic concepts of deep learning, I would recommend you to take that course before taking this one. It's also not a, a practical project course. So we have the advanced deep learning for computer vision also this semester that we're, offer, uh, we're offering. Uh, this is a course very much focused on the practical parts, so really coding up um, solutions for a specific computer vision problem. We will be coding up a little bit in this course, uh, but if you want really a full semester long project that takes out a lot of time, go and take the Advanced Learning for Computer Vision course. And it's also not a theoretical interaction to 3D vision. So I already recommended you to take the Computer Vision 2 course taught by Professor um, Daniel Kremers. There's also um, lectures online on YouTube, so you can check the Multiple View Geometry course. Now, okay, let me just um, briefly motivate you for this course, right? So, so what is computer vision? Um, so it turns out computer vision was a problem first defined in the 60s. So it's, it's quite a, well, some might call it a new problem, but it, it's actually has been around for quite some years. And the whole idea was um, to, to tackle the problem of mimicking the human visual system. So this seemed quite an easy task for, for the artificial intelligence group back in the 60s. And they were supposing that, that this human visual system was supposed to be the center block of robotic intelligence. So we can imagine a robot navigating around the environment. It needs to actually have a pair of eyes that understands the environment, looks around and understands what is happening around um, that environment. So this, is, um, this was defined actually in 1966, right, as a summer vision project. That's right? so something quick to be developed and to be solved in a summer, three months. Um, so essentially in one summer, they wanted to construct a significant part of the visual system, essentially solve computer vision in one summer. And at the time, this was very much related to what we call pattern recognition, right? So they thought that the human visual system, what it does is it has a certain set of patterns. And what it does is basically learn, detect, and redetect these patterns. And again, this was uh, proposed in 1966, right, as a three-month project. And here we are in 2020, still working on it. So not such an easy project, not such an easy problem as they made it sound. So in computer vision, we want to give eyes to a computer, right? So we want to look at the world through a camera and actually try to understand every pixel of that camera, every pixel um, that, is, that is provided by that camera. So every pixel of the image, right? The, the, this matrix of numbers, this image, is the only thing we have to interpret the world around us. And so we want to interpret, for example, this world in a semantic way. So know where um, the car is depicted in the image. So which pixels belong to a car, which pixels are representing a car, or a tree, or a person, or the road. So this is the task that we call semantic segmentation, and we will cover in one lecture um, how can we actually approach this task with deep learning. Um, of course, um, there are certain categories like cars or person 
um, where we, it might not be enough to actually say all of these pixels belong to the class person, but we actually want to identify the different instances of this class. And this is the task called instance-based segmentation, which we will also cover in the lecture. And finally, of course, the world is not static. The world is moving. So we don't really want to understand every pixel of an image, but we want to understand every pixel of a video. And hence, we also inherently want to solve the problem of multiple object tracking. So actually detecting these objects, understanding where they are in the image, and following them over time. So this is overall kind of covered in, in the task of dynamics in understanding. So this is very important, of course, for tasks like autonomous driving, right? So a car that is driving around needs to understand the scene around it. For example, here uh, in, this, in this demo, there are all these um, objects that are being detected with bounding boxes. So there are traffic signs, people, cars, and these are um, detected at each, um, at each image but also track through time. So you see that these that this bounding boxes actually track these objects through time. Of course, you can have like more um, fine grained representation where each pixel actually is labeled with one semantic category. Now, um, to understand an image, we will go step by step, right? So at interaction to deep learning, we already saw um, the task of image classification. So you get this uh, image of the cute cat here on the left, and you want to classify the whole image. So there is, for example, a cat in this image, or there is a dog, or there is a table. Now, one step further is actually to localize this object, right? So we don't want to say the whole image represents a cat, but we actually want to place a nice tight bounding box around the object. So you want to classify the object and localize it. If you do this for multiple objects, suddenly you're targeting object detection, which is one of the tasks that we're going to talk about first. And again, a more fine-grained representation can be the instance uh, segmentation problem. So this instance segmentation problem has been um, quite targeted in the research community. So you have, for example, here some results of what the community can do as of um, 2017. So these are the results of Mascar CNN, famous method that we will also cover in the lecture. And you can see that there's a broad range of categories ranging from person, umbrella, skateboard, all the way to donuts. Um, and you can actually detect a bunch of categories in a really precise way and put a mask around them. And so what we can actually do is we can do things like this, which are actually pretty impressive, where we detect a lot of objects. There are a lot of occlusions, a lot of overlap, but we still detect a lot of objects and we put a mask around them in a pretty reliable way. So again, if we actually take this to the autonomous driving scenario, we see that autonomous cars can already see, I have to say, in, in nice um, lighting conditions can already see and understand quite a lot of the environment. So um, we will cover in the lecture different representations depending on the granularity. So I have already gone over the, the coarse representation detections and this um, precise representation, which is in the form of uh, segmentation or masks. And we will also cover um, giving semantic meaning to the segmentation masks with or without instances. So separating the different persons, for example, from the category people or not. And um, all of these tasks, all of these different levels of granularity um, really go well with deep learning, which is why most of the techniques presented in this course are going to be based on machine learning and on deep learning in particular. So then we will take it one step further. We will go from image to video. And of course, the, the adding the temporal domain brings several advantages, right? So there's a lot of redundancy. Not much is changing from one frame to the other. And we can also use the smoothness assumption. So we can, um, we can actually use the assumption that things do not change or move much from one frame to the other. So, so a pedestrian is not going to jump around and suddenly be on the other side of the image. So this is an assumption that we use um, quite a lot in multiple object tracking. 
Um, so while this temporal domain has um, quite some advantages, it also has disadvantages. So usually we have a video at 30 frames per second, which means that you have to do all of your computations, all of your detection segmentation, 30 frames per second. So it takes quite a while, it's quite computationally intensive um, to, to actually process a video. And of course, there's all types of occlusions happening. Uh, multiple objects are moving, multiple objects are interacting. So there's a lot of space to actually do research on in um, to actually fully understand a video with all these occlusions and all these objects moving around. So back in 2009, um, this data set was proposed for the task of multiple object tracking. So you see that this is a um, quite a simple data set, few uh, objects uh, of interest are moving around. There was this pole in the middle that was an occlusion, so this made things difficult. But nowadays, what we're doing is targeting more um, these scenarios. So scenarios where the camera is moving, uh, viewpoints are, are changing all the way from you know ground level to this kind of uh, level higher up. There's uh, tons of objects that you want to follow and even um, these type of scenarios where, you know, it's just um, absolutely crazy that there's lots of occlusions, all the objects look the same, we're actually trying to track all these pedestrians at the same time. This is a really, really challenging task. So we want to understand where every object is going. We want to also understand how they're interacting and trying to predict um, the future trajectories, right? This is super important for, for autonomous driving. And um, at the same time, we want to get detection, segmentation, semantic results, which are consistent in the temporal domain. So this is something that we'll also talk about. So the rough schedule, the rough content of the lecture is going to be um, aside from this, from this introductory lecture, uh, it's going to be two lectures on object detection, one stage, two stage, then we're going to move to single and multiple object tracking, also for two lectures. We're going to have a lecture on trajectory prediction, generative adversarial networks are going to be presented also. Uh, then we will move towards uh, mask uh, representation, so segmentation problems, semantic segmentation, instant segmentation, and video object segmentation. And finally, as a last step, we're going to go towards the 3D world and see how tracking and segmentation is done there. So we will cover uh, famous architectures that you have all probably heard about. Uh, FastRCNN, YOLO, RetinaNet. We're going to cover person re-identification through SAMIS network. Um, quite a lot of graph neural networks in the form of uh, message passing networks and also generative adversarial networks for trajectory prediction, and finally move to um, the mask the segmentation domain with mask RCNN, OSVOS, uh, introducing also techniques like deformable convolutions, and finally go to the 3D domain. So if you want to know uh, why we're offering this lecture, uh, please visit our uh, web for the Dynamic Vision and Learning Group. So we do a lot of research on all of these topics. So if you're interested, go there and take a look at what kind of research we're doing. So all the slides uh, will be also provided on the website uh, and on Moodle. Um, any questions regarding the syllabus, the exercise, the contents of the lecture, please use Moodle. If you have any other questions, we have set this email address, dst at dbl.in.um.de. So any questions, please address them there because we will not be answering um, emails that are sent to our individual addresses. That's all. Uh, welcome to CV3 DST lecture. Um, I'm really happy that you're taking this lecture. We're going to have tons of fun. So stay tuned for the first lecture on object detection.